Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. Today, we're gonna to talk about downdraft kitchen exhaust. So in this nice open concept kitchen, uh, we wanna have soaring ceiling heights and um, nice open feeling and everything is one big room, we're all happy together. And for that, we're gonna be installing downdraft exhaust, which means this little slot in the cooktop. And this is a gas cooktop, so of course we're creating moisture when we combust gas, natural gas, propane, whatever it is. And also we're creating carbon monoxide. So we wanna make sure that we use this every single time we cook. Now we wanna know, does this work or not? First thing that you wanna do is always, whenever you see something like this in a house that you're about to buy or in a uh, system that you're about to have installed in your own house, you turn it on to see what it sounds like. That's not the most pleasant sound to have every single time I cook. So maybe I'll try it on low instead. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so we're gonna keep it on high for this test just to give it the full benefit of the doubt. Uh, I need my incense pen or my smoke pen or my candle, and all I have to do is light and blow out, and I can see what happens. Now, when I'm on the burners that are right next to the vent, all of the smoke gets sucked down into it. When I move out further, it's having a little bit of a harder time but it does seem to be making its way down. But all the way out here, wah, wah, we're having a little bit of a problem. There is definitely some escaping gases, uh, as you can see from the smoke here. Now, this is on high. This is where you would want to be using this. And the moral of this story is right now, we have just decided never to cook on this cooktop. Why do we have five eyes on this stove if we're not gonna use one of them? Why don't we just have four? Now, this is not how we're actually gonna cook. We're actually gonna cook with things on top of the cooktop. And when I start introducing blockages, there is no way that this smoke is going anywhere near that vent from over here. Also, we are going to have surfaces interacting with the air. And of course, air is squirrely you're gonna have a hard time getting air to do what you want in almost all cases, uh, which is why designing ductwork, designing exhaust systems is very difficult. Now we can see when we actually have a blockage on this frying pan on the far right eye, we have a much more difficult time getting the gases to go out. And specifically at this point, we're talking not just about the carbon monoxide and the moisture that's being created, but also fry grease and which is finding its way down onto the floor. Even though I have a hot smoke that's trying to get up, it's not nearly as hot as the fry grease is going to be or the smoke that you're creating. Now, the other thing that's gonna happen is turbulence. So I'm not just gonna have a nice still cooked up. I am gonna be coming in here and sampling things and adding ingredients and stirring. And when I do any of those things, now the smoke has a much harder time getting outside. Likewise, on all of these individual eyes. And again, this is on high. This is the highest setting that we've got here. So all in all, what I'm telling you about this system is, mm, doesn't always work very well. It could be that this thing is gonna have a fine time if we are always very gentle with it, if we always use only these three eyes, and if we were to maybe add a kind of a buffer here to make sure that air wasn't able to get over that way. Now, all of this, is only what we can see. Now what you can't see is the way that this is vented under the cabinet. This is the wrong way to vent any air. Air should go in as straight a line as possible with as few turns and as smooth a duct as possible. This flex duct is a lot rougher for air to have to go through so it induces a lot more back pressure which is why it's so loud in part and also why it's not moving nearly as much air as they thought that it would in the laboratory where they tested this thing right here. So we're forcing this to push down and around and do a whole bunch of different little turns and finally go out here where it takes another 90 degree turn and goes out to the side of the house. So if you're gonna have it installed, you wanna make sure that you build into your contract and contractors, this is for you also to demand that your clients demand from their contractors that they work with who are your competition that the duct will be hard, it will be straight, and that the piece of equipment will perform at the decibel rating that it's supposed to. Now, let's go ahead and turn this off because it is pretty loud. Decibels is not how the manufacturer of this piece of equipment will describe 
the loudness of their piece of equipment. They'll use the word sones. And sones is this weird algorithm that you have to do in a laboratory with a computer, very hard to do in the field. So again, we're using the wrong language across the board with home performance. We're trying to get everybody on the same page and we need to be able to have these conversations so that we can prove that a measured performance was achieved in your house. I hope this has helped you with your own kitchen in the future. Tune in next time.